In this presentation, I'll take you through the authorization code plus PKCE OAuth2 grant type. This will include a description of why it's important and it will include a step-by-step -step walkthrough to show you the process from start to finish. PKCE stands for Proof Key for Code Exchange and it's usually pronounced Pixie. It's a super set of features on top of the existing OAuth2 authorization code grant type since vulnerabilities were discovered in that particular grant type since the OAuth2 specification was released. So why should you care about PKCE? Well, security is important first and foremost. You want to make sure that your applications are as secure as they can possibly be but only fully server-side hosted applications are classed as private and can securely store secrets. SPAR's desktop and mobile applications are public and their contents cannot be fully protected. You can normally obfuscate an application as much as you possibly can, but it's still not fully protected from prying eyes. An experienced hacker can easily inspect a public application and obtain any secrets or look at ways that they may be able to compromise your application. Public applications can be exploited via the authorization code interception attack when they use the authorization code grant type. This is where a malicious application running alongside your existing application can intercept the authorization code sent back from the identity provider and they can then obtain the authorization token and actually impersonate the user. If you're only using the authorization code grant type for your application, you should seriously consider adding PKCE as an additional measure, mainly because the forthcoming OAuth 2.1 specification will likely mandate that all implementations of the authorization code grant type use Pixie. So now I'm going to illustrate the process of the OAuth2 authorization code plus Pixie grant type. We start as always with a user, normally referred to as a resource owner, who wants to log into your application, typically referred to as a client in the world of OAuth. That application then generates a random string, which is referred to as the code verifier. Once they have this code verifier, they then generate a SHA-256 hash of the string, which is referred to as the code challenge. The application then redirects the user to the identity provider with the code challenge hash. The authorization server then persists that code challenge temporarily and returns the user back to the application with the authorization code. So far, this is pretty much what the authorization code grant type does. Once the application gets the authorization code, they send the authorization code in an HTTP post back to the identity provider. And for this, they will specify the code verifier here. It's safe for them to send the plain text code verifier because it's an HTTP post and it will be protected over TLS. When the identity provider receives the code verifier, it will perform a SHA-256 hash again, and it will compare it to the original code challenge, which was sent by the application as part of this process. If the two hashes match, then the next stage is the identity provider will return the access token back to the application and now the application is free to use that access token to access any resources on behalf of the user. So to highlight the differences between the authorization code grant type and the PKCE, I've highlighted all the steps which are the Pixie side of things. So you can see at the top we have the generation of the code verifier and the code challenge. The application includes the code challenge as part of the redirect to the identity provider. 
and when the application receives the authorization code, it sends back the plain text code verifier, which is then checked by the identity provider. And then if those hashes match, then it's deemed as a secure transaction and the authorization token, sorry, the access token is actually sent back.